dimension of insight, we are going to be addressing more and more and more the subliminal. <coughs> so I'll just quickly go over the subliminal, yes? If we look at consciousness, the consciousness we are experiencing at this moment in time, we are most focused on the mind that thinks conceptually. So we could call it intellectual, maybe, rational, maybe, logical, maybe, discursive. A lot of words have been used to describe the activity of the mind we're using at this moment. But it's the mind that looks at the world outside it and knows all about it. That's the one in which most of us are most focused all the time. Then, just below that, is the subliminal layer. And the word subliminal is derived from the Latin, as I'm sure a lot of you know, which basically means below the threshold. Below the threshold. So, below the threshold of the level of thinking I'm most familiar with is this other dimension. And from what I can make out, the subliminal mind is like a laboratory full of little machines. And they're all reflexes. The little reflex machines. And what happens is energy from the deeper levels, the unconscious or whatever term you want to use, energy comes up, impacts these machines, they are triggered, and they produce reflexive behavior, or refle reflexive thinking, or reflex something triggered a feeling, something triggered a thought, something triggered a reaction. Now, some of these impulses come from within, others come from without. But almost all our reactive, reflexive processes are triggered within the subliminal. And the most important mechanism within the subliminal is the subliminal reflex. It is a reflex which responds to a stimulus and immediately delivers a message. And the message saying, now it has to be like this. Now I have to feel this way. Now it's going to be this. So, for example, when you got into the dining room, and there was no chicken soup, but there was tomato soup, and you're allergic to tomatoes and you hate them anyway, the subliminal reflex said, now the supper is a failure. I mean, obviously that's an exaggeration, but for some people it's not an exaggeration. Our reactive mechanisms are actually mediated by the subliminal reflex. And this is why when we become reactive, we become so convinced about the correctness, about the authenticity of our reaction. And then we go ahead and we make a scene about it. Being completely confident that this is the right thing to do and we have every right to do so. Because the subliminal reflex has told us, this is what now happens. This is how you now do it. So. The more you become aware of the subliminal reflex, the more you will discover that everything you are experiencing on a moment-to-moment -moment basis in the way of thinking processes, and particularly emotional processes, is being triggered by the subliminal. And the subliminal is giving that message, which arrives at a conscious level as an authority. So this is why I feel I have to react this way. It has to be like this. Even when at another level I don't want to. Like if somebody does something I don't like and I feel rejected. Have any of you ever felt rejected? <laughs> yeah? What does a reject look like? A reject. <laughs> I bet you every one of you has felt rejected at some point in your life. So here we are, a room full of rejects. But actually, what's it all about? 
It was simply a subliminal reflex that said, now you're rejected. That's all. And then we believed it. And then we look at this fascinating process of how we create reality. That process is triggered. I get the story, now I'm being rejected. Then, this tendency to identify comes into the picture. I identify with it. And I say, this is now me. I am now rejected. And I could go into a 20-year depression about that. Maybe even my whole life if I did it thoroughly. I could be miserable for the rest of my life because I'm a reject. That is how we create reality. That is now my identity. So, having bought this identity, I move through the world as the reject. And the wonderful thing about that is I naturally invite everybody to reject me because I create a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, I go along, I go through the world with two big signboards above me. One, I'm a reject. <laughs> Number two, you now have to reject me as quickly as possible. And if I'm at that point, there's almost nothing you can do about it, because whatever you do, I will interpret as rejection. I will create these self-fulfilling prophecies. Isn't it wonderful what we human beings can do? How we can make ourselves totally miserable. But of course, we're trapped in it. Let's not, do, let's not forget that, because the subliminal reflex is triggering this idea of reality. Always. And this is why insight training is liberating. Because when you start catching the subliminal reflex, you catch the moment when your mind tells you a lie and you buy into it. And then when we look at psychological conditioning theory, we get a whole new perspective. Because conditioning is dependent on me buying the story continually. And because it's subliminal, most people do not see it. Therefore, it's an automatic process of just buying into it. So it's, it's, a, it's reached the level of compulsion. But if you start exposing subliminal reflex, you begin to see, my mind is telling me lies. You know, we're all liars, but we are whopping liars when we talk to ourselves. The biggest lies are the lies we tell ourselves. And it's happening at a subliminal, compulsive level. So, as we proceed with our inside training, we expose the subliminal reflex, we expose the lie, and that is what frees the mind. Not doing something, not addressing, oh, I feel rejected, all that stuff. You do not address that. You address what triggers the untruthful story in the mind. And that will eventually free you. It'll take a bit of time. That is what you're doing.